Hello friends, you're with a lonesome gamer and I'm playing Europa Universalis. And uh, the last video was a short one, mainly because this declaration of war came up and I wanted to check some rules and uh, yeah, get a little bit more comfortable with, with the procedures there before I continue. So I decided to, to upload it at that point. Not too much happened there. Um, the English managed to vassalize Scotland. Took them a while. They had to do some espionage actions. Got to get influence out. Uh, uh, the French had some influence there. They got to get that out first. And then finally they were able to do this. Um, apart from that, we've mainly seen technological advances, I think from the Turks, from the Austrians and the Poles, and uh, the French dealt with their unrest. Apart from that, not too much happened. But the French now declared, declared war against Savoy. And that is interesting because uh, and they also activated their alliance with Provence. And because of that, that gives now the emperor the option to defend the empire, because Savoy is part of the empire. And that was a little bit tricky, and I, I thought about that and how that works, and yeah. And in the end I decided, yes, I want to do that. I want to defend the Empire. I think the Austrians are in a pretty good shape. Now the way that works is the following. First of all, I guess I simply have to place the marker here to indicate that. It says defending the Holy Roman Empire. So we place our marker there. And that means because it is a call to arms technically by Savoy, um, if a player answers a defensive call to arms, they get a cube. And that's actually something I didn't know. Um, when you get attacked by another player, as a player, you get a cube um, with the declaration of war. You get a military cube as the defender. I don't know if that was relevant. Uh, maybe when the French attacked the English, uh, but I don't even know that. Maybe we kind of messed up there. Maybe also, yeah, that, that might have been the case. But, um, yeah, apart from that, we haven't seen many wars between players. So we're gonna give the Austrians a cube and then they will get their imperial manpower and this is equal to the influence that the Austrians have in electoral areas and that is up to a maximum of eight and they will actually get the maximum of manpower here so god how much is that I think this this might be it now. We got four, five, six, I think this is even nine. Yeah. So this is the imperial manpower. We got eight units there. And basically when the Austrians fight a battle, they can simply take the units from there and use them in a battle. It has to be either inside the empire or in an area adjacent to the Empire. And uh, at the end of the turn, um, they will go away again. But until then, they can use these eight additional manpower. This is really a pretty complex situation and uh, it's by far the, the most complex thing that I've seen until now in the game. The whole call to arms aspect is scattered all over the book. 
you have to check in in different um, it is an action calling someone to arms so you got to check in the actions area you got to check at the warfare area you got to check at the um, at the at the diplomacy area and there it is also call to arms and then again it's about alliances so there are also different things you gotta check at the holy roman empire area uh it's it's insane i got i don't know i had probably six or seven different situ um, things that i had to check and it's all i mean yeah that was pretty hard but okay in the end i think i got a pretty good idea what's going on so as I mentioned, they sent a call to arms to me. I accept it. That places that Defend the Empire token on that sheet. That gives me the Imperial uh, manpower. It also allows me to send call to arms myself to my allies. allies and that's something I'm going to do. And because it's defensive call to arms, I only have to spend a single cube to do so. So I'm going to activate my alliance with Bohemia. They have five. Um, they have five tax income, so I get half of that, rounded up. That gives me three additional cubes from my ally, ally into my manpower, and I can recruit them as infantry for free, as cavalry for. Um, for three bucks. So uh, the reason why this is important is because I only have 11 bucks. So I want free units. So I think I've done the declaration of war action and the call to arms action. They've also called to arms their allies in Provence. So I guess we're ready to go. Now I've already did the flow chart of the bot. And uh, so they've hired already an army. We can see that here. They also have their three mercenaries. And now they will move into into this area, I guess. It's an interesting ah, damn, I'm not even sure if they first of all, they are now at war with the Austrians. So they will also place a war token um, at my capital now. Now it's an interesting question. Where will they attack? Will they attack the Rhineland or will they attack Savoy as planned? I think it would make more sense to attack Savoy because that is basically their target. And uh, they managed to activate Provence because it is adjacent to Savoy. So I guess they will attack Savoy. That makes the most sense to me. So they move in here with their army. And that means they will now have to fight the army of Savoy, not my army. I'm, yeah, I'm somewhere else, but they got to fight the army of Savoy. And I think if I'm not mistaken, that these are four units. Because this is an NPR, the, uh, technically we didn't even have to take these, these four units. The, the, the bot will simply, uh, yeah, the bot will simply roll four dice. And he takes zero casualties. That totally sucks. I was hoping the Savoyans would do some damage. So the army of Savoy is destroyed. And that was a pretty bad start for the defenders. That is the action of the bot. But because they won a land battle, they get another cube. Now we go to Spain and they will now annex Naples. So they got a subjugate card. They have 
for influence plus a marriage there. That is exactly what they need. Um, yeah, so they simply can now pay a diplomacy cube and then they can annex Naples, which is obviously pretty awesome. A big diplomatic coup here. They get two more cities. This goes here. And yeah, excellent. Obviously, the cubes are removed. So yeah, there we go. And the card also goes away. And we come to the English. So what do they want to do? I think their goal is actually an invasion of Ireland. How can they do that? They need a claim and that's... I think that costs them two if I'm not mistaken. So I had to have a bit of a problem if I really want to do this invasion. Now, if I want to recruit units here, I could move them over here, but I need ships there, and then we might see a sea battle. Um, there is there's going to be two ships of the enemies here or here, depending on where, where you want that to have. I'm not sure, but there's going to be a naval battle, and that's not great. So, I wonder if I could, for example, hire units here, and if I simply could do this with two actions. Now, usually, you can only hire units, or the men... So, I could only hire three units here, because um, this thing has a military capacity of one, and then the three, the two adjacent harbors would also count. So I could hire three units in this area with a single recruit action. I wonder if I do two recruit action. I think then I could hire six units and that would be fine, I guess. Um, the problem I have is that Yeah, I don't, I mean, I got a lot of military cubes, so that's fine. I don't have a lot of money. I only have seven bucks. I could do a trade action. But there my problem is there are a lot of pirates here. So that kind of sucks. I'm really not sure how I want to deal with all that. Maybe I should simply do a trade action first. I could also play... I got a good administrative card. I could play the exceptional year and take the nine bucks. Now that means I lose the chance to remove unrest. This is something I can do here. But you know, maybe the nine bucks are simply worth it. That would give me enough money to recruit an army without fiddling around with trade, dealing with the pirates or whatever. So I think actually this is something I wanna do first. I'm going to spend two admin cubes. I got a ton of them. And simply take nine bucks for that. However, got to be careful. I got to make sure that I have a ruler. And yeah, it seems I got this guy here. So I think I'm okay here. So there we go. 
this card goes away and I get nine bucks and this allows me to hire a nice army. Now things are getting interesting. We come to the Austrians trying to defend Savoy. Now the way I thought this should work out is I will simply spend a military cube and I'm gonna move my army. Now they're sitting here at Venetia but at first I thought this doesn't work because there are mountains here and it's hard to cross mountains. However, this is at the moment still a friendly area because I got a friendly city in there and that means I can ignore the mountains. It's a little weird because <laughs> there are much more enemies but this is a friendly area from what I understand. So therefore I can move the army one space to here. This allows me to pick up these troops that I left there for garrison. So they go in here now. And now I'm going to enter here Burgundy and I'm going to meet the army of the French. And that means we see a battle and that allows me to use my imperial manpower. So we're going to take all of them. Well, I might as well leave them here for now. I'm going to remove the casualties. But overall, I got eight infantry sitting there. In addition to this, I have a general that gives me two blue dice. And then we'll see. So I'm going to attack with five dice. I mean, they also have really a massive army, but mine is bigger and also a little bit better. I got two cavalry and I got a cannon. So let's see. So I score three hits and a cannon. So I score basically four hits. So that means one, two, three, four. Okay, so these go away. These are completely removed. These go away for now and half of them will go back in the manpower reserve where they still have a lot. But I also have a ton. So this is, this is gonna be interesting. Then, um, They will attack and they got five dice as the bot has always five dice. Okay, that is just two hits, so not too impressive. And I'm not sure if I have to kind of remove them, um, you know, uh, kind of one of them and then one of mine, or if I can simply pick two of them. We'll see about that. Actually, these units are treated like allied units. So we have to alternate and we have to start with mercenaries, which we don't have, then our army and then these. So sadly, we have to remove one of these guys first and then one of them. So now, that isn't great, but I obviously don't want to lose my calf and my, my cannon, but maybe that will happen. So we continue the war, the battle, and we have again five dice. Okay, and we do five damage. Pretty awesome. So now this is three and another two. This guy is completely removed. And now they will fire back. That is bad. That's really fucked up. So we take five damage and our leader takes a hit. That is not good at all. That was a terrible roll.
That's a wound, so it's one, two, three, four. I think I have to take one of them. So that means two of them are removed. That wasn't good at all. Okay. Well, I can't help it. Uh, we continue. And in their army, there are only three left. And I kill them. They get a chance to fire back. And my leader dies. And I lose three more units. So that was bad. That was absolutely not what I was hoping for. So I basically lose two units here and two here. And yeah, I paid a very high price for this defense. I destroyed the army of the French. But that was very, very bad. My General Francis dies. I still have a massive army. I only have these three units here. The army goes away, but now, and I get a cube back, but I got a, I got a huge problem. I don't have a general anymore, and yeah, I've lost big parts of my army, my cavalry is destroyed. I don't have a ton of money to replace them. And this is not looking good anymore. It really isn't. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how this continues now. Yeah, we took some really bad hits here. So it's the Poles now. And, well, I think their plan is to attack Kaffa. Because that is another harbor they need. But they need a claim to do so. And I don't have that. I cannot do it, I think. Ah, uh, fucked up here again. I mean, I could fiddle around with my cubes, but the problem, I don't know. I probably simply can't do it, and I think I simply should accept that. You know, I was basically somehow considering attacking Austria next turn and therefore I wanted to save cubes. I thought attacking Kaffa would be okay because it basically cost me just a single cubes. Um, I, I have to do the declaration of war, I could move in there, uh, win the battle, get my cube back and then I get to spend only a single cube to do the siege. But if I want to fabricate a claim first, that means I gotta have to basically take another cube out of here. And that's something I don't want to do. So, hmm. Maybe I should simply forget about that. Attacking Kaffa. And instead, I don't know, try to bring my army in position so that I can attack Austria next turn. But this is not easy at all. The problem for me is Austria is basically guarded by these mountains here. And it's so expensive to cross the mountains. You could, there is a card, the Logistic Master, that allows you to kind of ignore this penalty, but I don't have that. So I could hope to get it or I could try to move through here into Bohemia, but that means that again, he can defend the empire and I have to fight these eight additional units and I want to avoid that. I could go to war with Turkey instead because we have this conflict on the Balkans but that's also something, you know, I would like to hit Austria. They are the ones that are in the lead. 
I don't want to hit Turkey. So that kind of really sucks for me. At the moment, I basically just see a single option. I want to bring my army back here. And then maybe I'm lucky and I find... Well, I can still discard cards, but I, nah, I don't want to do that. I have good cards here. So I guess what I'm going to do is I simply going to play a cube, move my army two spaces here to Moldavia, and then maybe next turn I get a chance to attack. Uh, next round if I find the logistic cards and otherwise I might still consider maybe attacking down here uh, the Turks. Um, I think crossing the mountains is crazy attacking Bohemia is super dangerous um, yeah I, I don't know. Let's see what the Turks do now they draw a bot card I draw from here and that is another convert action I think they cannot do that anymore I think yeah it's it's not possible for them so they will do a focus action which simply means they take one of these and place it in politics and that's it that's all they do so they are really peaceful and now we go back to the French which will do a defend action because they are now under attack by the Austrians. So now we will see the destruction of the Austrians. The bot comes back immediately. He recruited units here and uh, there is enough military capacity here to recruit nine units. They did that. They will attack Austria. And yeah, this is just a disaster now for the Austrians. Their army will get wiped out. The only question is, do we want to use these guys or not? And you know, I think the answer is no because I just burned them basically for nothing. I only have a single unit left here. Um, um, no, I'm not gonna do it. Okay, so my army is totally destroyed. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I can fight back, of course, with three dice. And okay, I also do one damage. So one of these guys is destroyed. That is now uh, the end of this battle. My cannon is destroyed. And that is the end of the Austrian army. That's really bad news. And... <sighs> yeah. So the French guy goes back here after the battle. And... Yeah, I think this is... The French, get, they get another cube because they won the battle. And it's looking grim for the Holy Roman Empire. It really is. So the Spaniards, um, I think they do some diplomacy and their goal is to annex Aragon next. So they're gonna start by placing two cubes. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Maybe actually ah, I, I, I forgot that I can buy influence. So maybe that is actually something I want to do. But I already did a reorg. So I have five influence. I need three more that would cost me nine bucks and 
I need one more for the subjugation card. Uh. So the question is, is it worth taking, I don't know, like two loans or something to be able to do this? I get a lot of additional income and I, I, I got a pretty much insane income next turn. So, you know, maybe it is actually worth it. Um, so, I think I'm going to keep that cube for my subjugation card. I still have one left. And then I'm going to spend... Hmm. Yeah. Oh man, is it really worth it? Tough question. I have to take three loans. I think I'm not going to do this. This is just too, too expensive. I think I'm just going to start placing a couple of cubes now. And then uh, I can simply do it next turn. Um, so this is my, yeah, this is basically my influence action. I might as well keep one just in case, and that's it. Okay. And then next turn when I have uh, more influence, and I should get a lot, I can do it without taking any loans. There is no reason to, to go crazy here. Okay. Um, so that was my action, and we go... To the English. So I think what the English will do is they will simply recruit units. Now they can do this here in pale. The problem is, I already mentioned that, they only have a military capacity of three and they want to fight these three areas. So um, eh, that's a little bit tricky. So I think I have to do two recruitment actions. So then I have six units and that might be enough. <laughs> Let's hope for the best. So uh, first I got to spend a cube and I'm going to simply hire three units, three infantry I guess. Maybe I should at least take, you know, I'm thinking about taking one cavalry. That this is, I think that's reasonable. I'm going to take one cavalry that costs me, can I afford that? Yeah, I can. That costs me five. And then I'm going to hire um, two more infantry so I get back six bucks. So there we go. We got two infantry and a calf, and I'm gonna place the army relax. That's a little tricky to get them out with a single hand. Okay, I'm gonna place the army now in Ireland. There is no war yet. Ah, fuck, I forgot I need a claim. <laughs> well, I can do it. If I fiddle around with my cubes, I can, yeah, I can do this. I can get a claim in Ireland. Okay. The Austrians, <laughs> yeah, they are now in trouble. What are they gonna do? Well, it seems they probably have to accept that defeat. I do not see that it makes any sense to throw more units against the French army. But I'm afraid I really got to be careful that I do not lose more units. So I think I think I'm going to take I'm going to hire units here. 
in Lombardy and I hope I don't get attacked by the French but that's uh, that's a tough decision I don't know I, I think I'm gonna do it I only have 11 bucks that's not a lot but at least I get these guys for free hmm I got a feeling I have to do a trade action first I need more cash so that's what the Austrians will do draw a couple of cards and hope that we find something that's not good fish awesome well uh, that doesn't help a lot no oh actually in the Adriatic Sea we could do that I got a couple of ships there so this is an option salt no but we can trade fish. That's not a lot. Uh, yeah, that's not hot. So let's see. We have... Uh, this guy should, should be placed like this, I guess. So we got... Um, yeah. So we got these two. I can bring one of my guys in here. And then I got a trading power of three. And then we got Venezia. I own that. I vassalized it. So does that count? Gotta check that. The problem is you have to own these provinces. And I only vassalized them. So they do not count, which is a shame. Athena, Crete, no. Otherwise it would be pretty good. I got three. Um, the Spaniards have one I guess this this ship here the Turks are also involved oh man and they have two I guess but I think the Spaniards need a merchant there I think if it's not located there they don't get anything so I checked again the players the human players need a merchant to take passive trade income. So there is nobody there. The bots don't need a merchant to get passive trade income. Um, and if they get passive trade income, they get always from maritime nodes, they always get two cubes. So that means it's two additional cubes for the Turks. And uh, because I got three trade power I get five bucks from that I mean that is okay I guess it's not great but it's okay and the guy is activated so that's five more bucks and that will help a bit so now it's the Poles now the Poles would love to attack Austria this is the perfect the perfect time to do it the problem is they don't have a claim. Now I'm even considering saying, hey, fuck it, I could attack without a claim, without a Casus Belli. To do that, I would lose two stability. Now they have a plus one, so maybe they could even try that. But the problem is they only have two cubes left. They don't have a significant army. Sieging costs a lot of cubes. So it makes no sense. It's really painful, but it simply does not make any sense to do it. What the Poles do, they will use their missionaries to make some of these Orthodox areas Catholic. And also this one, for example. This is definitely one that we want to get rid of. So I'm going to spend one of these and one of these and now this, um, this diverse faith is gone and this is again a Catholic area. We go back to the Turks. And again, they do a focus action. And that means they will actually gain a milestone. 
they don't have any unrest so um, they take again a cube place it here and this goes now away and that gives them a milestone in uh, this one here the religious unity it's tricky uh, that should be scored at the end of the turn but I think it's also going to be possible um, now if the bot does it the bot will gain another two cubes as a reward for doing this and he will score five victory points because he's the first guy who did that now this is not really fair because um, this milestone is scored at the end of the round so a standard player could not score that during the turn but I think I simply follow the rules here so the bot is now doing pretty good the Turks here oh and one of these diplomatic cards should be discarded let's go once more around the table basically uh, first we're gonna see what the the French do I assume they are no longer under attack now but they can siege so they will simply go to siege and they will now siege Savoy that costs them two bot power and uh, yeah that's that's then the end of their turn Spaniards they will colonize they spent these admins and they will colonize Florida I guess uh, there we go okay and I think that might be the Spanish main I'm not sure no they need three okay so they're not done there uh, that was the action and we're coming to England and they're simply gonna do another uh, another recruit action three units go in there into their army in Ireland And back to Austria. So what could happen? I mean, if things go wrong, the bot might attack down here, for example. Or here. Both sucks. I think he would go for the one for the area with more tax income. So therefore, I think I want to hire an army down there. Okay, I, I realized I placed all my units from the from the army in here. I think I had six units. They should go to exhaust it. They should not be discarded, obviously. But I lost six units in my army. And I'm going to place them here. Now, I hired five units. Uh, five infantry units and one calf. And I'm also going to take my guys here. I think I can do that. I got a manpower of two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know. I think the vassals also count. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. They add to your manpower and then it should be no problem. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, absolutely. I can do that. Okay. So that was my recruit action. That cost me a cube, obviously. And that was the Austrians. I'm basically just hoping that I will not get attacked here. But I have to defend Lombardy. The Poles... Hmm. Again, it, it's, it seems reasonable to say, hey, you know, why not 
use the missionaries, you know, and simply make your, make, what is that? I think that was here. And get rid of these orthodox areas or make them Catholic. Now these two are already Catholic and I got again a problem with with counters here. Okay, so I'm gonna make this orthodox. I'm gonna place this here and these three <laughs> areas. I think I only have two Catholic markers, which is ridiculous. Um, but it really seems so. Maybe I can find some more, I don't know. But this is for now, this is all Catholic. And we go to the Turks, draw another card, see what they do. And that's unrest again, or they spy. So um, because they don't have any unrest, they're gonna spy. Let's see what they're gonna do. Gotta find the spy table. There we are. They're not at war. So we gotta select an opponent. Let's do that. Um, I think first three is highest points. And then from four to six, it's highest tax value. Okay, so they play against Austria. And does the opponent have three or more unrest? Uh, I assume that vassals count. So the answer is yes, I guess. Covered action, the opponent must roll rebel dice. Okay, so let's do that. Um, so we got one here, Österreich. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's a good one. That brings this back. We got one here, Beograd. Okay, so they got to spend two bucks and they don't have that. So they have to take a loan. And that loan only gives them three bucks. Oh boy, now Austria is suffering, but I think that's uh, I mean, that's a good thing, right? They are so far in the lead, so it makes sense. We got a roll here for, oh, and we got a rebellion there. Okay, now that means that they basically become, I guess, independent. This is not a core area or anything. So this is kind of a Venetian area now. And therefore, I think we simply remove these guys. And then we have to roll for Crete. And there, nothing happens. So this goes back in here. And yeah, I guess that's, that's it. Okay, and um, that did cost two cubes of the Turks. There they are. They still have a ton of cubes. And this is it. I think we're going to stop here. And yeah, I mean, this is a bit of a... of a setback for the Austrians. They were doing fantastic at the start of the age, but maybe that decision to <laughs> defend the empire wasn't that great. I mean, let's be honest, they had really good chances. They had a huge army, which was bigger than the French one. They had a general and it looked pretty good, I guess, but yeah, they had some really poor roles. I mean, oh, let's say it that way. The French had spectacular roles. They killed the general. And um, yeah, then it looked grim. Let, let, let's face it. And now they are in depth. And they lost. 
they will lose imperial authority because they lost that battle and they will lose um, they lost the province a vassal not not great but okay I mean they're still far ahead but maybe that slows them down a little bit okay so uh, yeah hope to see you in the next video bye this is interesting I didn't realize that and and you know that's a the thing there there's a lot of the rules that you kind of miss when you read it the first time and then when you go back yeah I thought okay maybe you just read it again maybe you missed something and I indeed did I read the rebellion and I read what happens when a rebel town is is basically liberated and that is something that I missed earlier too the owners get a Cassus Ballet token there and that's important because that means they basically are forced to fight a war there and if they don't um, I think they lose actually a point in the next turn and that's a that's a little odd uh, first I have to I don't even I don't even know where these God, I don't know what type of markers that are. Actually, the reverse sides of a claim. So I gotta f exchange that claim with this marker. Now I gotta cast this Belli token against Zara. This is, I think, this is what happens. It says against the new owner. I this is a bit weird because you know this is kind of a an independent state now uh, but I think uh, you kind of expect it to recapture this province and not simply accept that they that they've left um, now wait a second yes here liberation Okay, the province is now controlled by the realm whose core province it is. Or if a regime, yeah, if it still exists or now re-emerges at a non-player realm. Okay, that's the case. A player realm whose provinces is liberated by rebels must place a Casa Spelli token on the new province owner's capital. I assume this is now this area and I think exactly the same should have happened with Gibraltar um, during the last turn so I will do this and that means that the Spaniards and luckily they still have a couple of uh, of markers so that means that the Spaniards are basically um, or kind of forced or whatever to to attack Gibraltar if they want to avoid a point loss and they also have Mercia so that kind of sucks um, I think I cannot do both okay yeah so I think I gotta I gotta deal with these two issues it's a bit tricky but yeah, I, I mean, it kind of makes thematic sense, right? You kind of have to, there is a rebellion and you're forced to suppress these fuckers. So, yeah, I guess that will happen. So, hope to see you on the next video. Bye.